I'm Mike Green. I'm a painter traditionally probably anchored in watercolour, but I've used a lot of mediums. You might call me a realist because I'm inspired by what I see. That anchors everything for me. But what I see is really not what I paint about. I, I paint about something else, something that's going on in the space. If I was painting semi-realistically, as some of the pieces in this exhibition are, I aim to get a sense of the space, the wind, the time of day. Those are important to me. Traditionally, I would say to separate myself from straight realism, I've always tried to put some kind of a barrier in there to make people think perhaps about the space. And sometimes that's just simply a tree. In my earlier works, it was often a chair to get people to concentrate on that point. My newer work the last 15 or so years has been working outside other people's spaces and a little bit more into my documentary history, if you like. It evolves generations of my family history, which I've got access to. My ancestors went to the Pacific Islands, went to South America, up through, up through America. They were involved in the gold mining times and so on. I've got this phenomenal written history that goes right back to about the 1790s. They tend to be staccato comments in the earlier letters. I'm well, please send 15 handkerchiefs. Maisie died. I was gored by a bull. Please send some gin. That kind of stuff. Or my husband's run away. He's not been too good. My wife is a pain in the neck. So it enables me to, I suppose, partially examine myself. And a lot of my newer work involves the letters cut up and amalgamated. So there's bits of my father, bits of my uncle, bits of all kinds of important ancestors of mine. What I try and do is create a barrier that leads to some sense of ambiguity about what I do. And you'll see that in the portraits, the portrait based on my father of Goodyear. You'll see there are many, many layers. It's just the man was complicated. Some of these paintings you'll see here have got three layers. In that process, I used multi-layering of paper to give not only up to break up the reality of it and suggest that this is, we're dealing with something you can't truly know. Sometimes they're really quite abstract underneath because I like to play a bit. So my paintings are a bit literary in that sense, but I try and leave lots of space for you as a viewer to interpret that space. The portrait of my father as a surrogate white man coming to a strange country, travelling from here to there, from Australia to Ireland to New Zealand to America to wherever. Travelling through history and time is really interesting to me. My grandmother was half Tongan and that means something and it means nothing. It's just a, a quirk. I mean, after all, I'm, I'm up here dealing with subject matter that is uh, relates to the Aboriginal culture of Australia. In a way I have no right to be there in another way I have because these are my song lines, these are my father's song lines. I just love the Aboriginal culture and I just really I have an affinity there because I have good ears gather up the sculpture which is really made up of a gathering of snippets of family. The history is mine but I hope the context is universal. That's a hard thing to get. That's why I've created things like the bones. It's an endeavor to make that kind of writing more realistic to people, to get them to settle on the fact that this is not just a visual thing, that there's other elements in, in it. People can, in the case of the bones, they can pick those bones up and rearrange them. They can study them and feel them just like real bones in the bush. The painting beside it, sticks and bones, was something that struck me when I first went to Uluru. I noticed the trees would fall, the bark would fall, and it would blow over a, a year. It would aggregate around a small rock or something, almost like a protective thing, a protective circle. And in a way, I guess that's what I do. I kind of husband these moments. Well, the common theme, it, it's built around a trip to Alice Springs. We hired a car and we just travelled and we let the spaces speak to us. And because we had sketchbooks with us all the time, every day we were drawing and sketching and, and the whole thing just takes you over. It's a marvellous area. If the weather is right, and it was for us, it's so compelling, you almost want to move up there. I could paint there for years, really. 
Obviously, I'd love people to be intrigued and hopefully they'll like the work. So I'm hoping they'll take away this journey that I'm on, something of interest that they might like to come back to or ask me about.